Hey there guys, today I'm going to show you what Chet does on the turnaround he uses on Cannonball Ray and what Jerry does behind him on that turnaround. And the turnaround is when they go from the C to the F sharp 9 to G9, E9, E flat 9, D9, G. Okay, so just to kind of get into it real quick here, I'll do Chet first uh, with a little bit of uh, of the uh, progression of what they're doing before that and then just go right into the into the turnaround and then I'll show you Jerry's regular speed and then uh, adjust the camera and show you exactly what they're doing. So this is the first part from D7 to G a couple times before the turnaround. Here we go. Chet does. Here's what Jerry does. Okay, one more time. Now when Jerry does that over top of Chet, doing this stuff, it just sounds fantastic. It's just, it's just fantastic. So I will adjust the camera, show you what they're doing, and as a bonus at the end of this, I'm going to show you Lenny Bro's version of it, what he does for the turnaround, which is really cool as well. We don't want to miss that, so stay tuned till the end. Okay, I'll move the camera, be right back. All right, so here we are. Let's do uh, checks first, okay? So what we're doing, we're doing basically, uh, we're just playing part of the chords here. We're playing part of the C formation. And then we're, we're not going to worry about playing the whole uh, C9 uh, or F sharp 9 position or the 9th positions all the way down. We're only going to be focusing on the 6th string, the 3rd string, and the 4th string. That's what he's picking. And it's just the thumb and one finger. So here's what's happening. On the C chord, I'm just doing the 6th string, 8th fret, 3rd string, 9th fret, 4th string, 10th fret. Like that. So we're bringing the thumb up from the 6th to the 4th, in between the 3rd string. Like that. Now there's a little tickety-boo that I like to say that's very important. The little tickety boos are very important for this kind of stuff, for finger style guitar, especially Chet and Jerry stuff. Um, so what's happening when Chet does that first thing like that from the six to the four with the third string in between, before he makes the shift to the next chord, he's doing this each time. Slow. change to the next one.
more of a gallop, right? Okay, so that's what Chet's doing. Now what Jerry does over top of that, he's doing the top end of the C chord in the F position. And he's just playing, he's going to do a backwards roll on all of these licks, just a backward roll starting on the one, two, to the three string. Um, first of all, though, he does, he does kind of slide in on third to get to the position, like that. So you're going to slide in on the, on the third from somewhere to the top of the C, and then a backward roll to a, basically a D7 position from where that is. So you're sliding in, backward roll, backward roll again. Now you're going to go to the third string on the seventh fret, second string on the eighth fret, first string on the tenth fret, backward roll. fret so you got seven eight and nine backward roll and you're gonna have third string seventh fret second string seventh fret first string sixth fret and then this just drops down to the five fret backward roll again One more time, sliding in on the third, backward roll to a D7 position. You're just going to add that first string on the ninth fret now, backward roll to seven, eight, and ten to nine, eight, seven. Seven, seven, and six. Down to the five fret on the first string. Backwards roll again. Okay, a bit faster. Probably best if I just play it like that slow and not try to explain it because it sounds more confusing if I try to explain it. So one more time. Now one other thing, same thing with, uh, with what Jerry's doing. There's a couple of little tickety-boos that are important and those are here. Before he goes to this, he's doing a little tickety-boo, right there, and here. There's only two of them, two tickety-boos. speed is this. Really subtle, but they're there. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Uh, now, when I was talking about Lenny Bro, when, when Lenny Bro played it, he, I mean, he played several different versions of that over the years, of course, as we all do. Uh, the one version I liked the best was, I think, one of his earliest ones in the uh, mid-60s, he, he did it, Lenny. 
and he played Cannibal Ray as a shuffle, a, a, a more of a shuffle feel, and I, I just I just love the shuffle feel. That's how I play it mostly now, actually, just a shuffle feel, a, a very slow, quite slow. So to get to that turnaround, he would do again the the D seven to the G beforehand would be like this. <laughs> slow he can he can double time that roll that uh, that Chet does when Chet plays it faster that's how they're gonna do it one time each when Lenny Bro does it slower he can double time it. he can do it twice and that's pretty cool Six four five four or six four six four. In this case, we'll make an exception. So it's just an A seven with the added first string seventh fret five four down to the D top edge. Just just the partial chord is all we need to do for the D thirteen five four again. These two here, they just move down. That's all it is, the baby finger stays there. Five, four, five, four, G. Cool. So there you go, guys. I hope that uh, was explained okay. It was a little more uh, talking than I wanted to do, but it's hopefully I got the point across. Hopefully you understood it. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, check out my uh, my web page at uh, jwcollinsauthor.com. I'm in the process of uh, getting my books uploaded again uh, onto Amazon and such. 
And if you have any comments, any questions on, on what I showed you today or whatever, if you have any, any comments or if you're kind of puzzled about something, just leave a comment below because I really enjoy answering, uh, answering those questions. Anyway, until next time, have the best day you can. See ya.